Enter the neutron bomb. At the center of this weapon is the neutron. Nestled within the structure of an atom exists a tranquil subatomic particle that possesses no electric charge, called the neutron. Neutrons were discovered in England in 1932. They were immediately perceived to be immensely valuable for subnuclear research because unlike the particles that had been used to bombard atoms, to look at them, if you will, up to that time, neutrons could slip into the nucleus, positively charged nucleus of an atom, without being repelled by that positive charge. They would just kind of fall into the nucleus and then all sorts of interesting things would happen. These free neutrons can invade the foundation of matter and create useful isotopes for medicine and industry. Free neutrons, however, can be extremely hazardous to all living things. Free neutrons are produced within the heart of a nuclear reactor or from a chain reaction created in the detonation of an atomic bomb. From the beginning of nuclear testing in 1945, neutrons have maintained a special interest in all atomic tests. When the scientists at Los Alamos worked on the targeting of the first bombs on the Japanese cities during the Second World War, they were concerned that these weapons not be perceived to be some new kind of poison gas. They were concerned that the primary destructive force that was harnessed would be blast and fire, but not radiation. They were, however, aware that one of the first kinds of radiation coming off a nuclear fireball would be prompt neutrons, a huge flux of neutrons and that those neutrons would kill anyone within a certain range. What they calculated, however, was that anyone who would be killed by the neutron flux would probably be killed by the blast of the explosion as well. First, there is an emission of thermal energy, gamma rays and neutrons. Depending upon the altitude of the burst, the neutrons reach the target in large or small quantities the gamma rays extend far from the target center. In general, radiation causes ionization in the component atoms of cells, altering their chemical nature and impairing or destroying their normal function. With whole body radiation, ionization causes loss of function of the more sensitive tissues and organs. The degree of loss depends upon the dosage. If the exposure is both general and severe, death results. In May of 1945, the war in Europe came to an end. Nazi Germany was defeated. Churchill, Roosevelt, and Stalin met cordially at Yalta and Potsdam to discuss the fate of Germany. The Allies agreed that the countries they had occupied should be liberated and that freely elected governments should be encouraged. But for the countries occupied by Russia, Stalin had other plans. The Russians kept their army intact, overwhelmingly maintaining the largest military force in Europe. Then, Russia decided to cut off the Allied sectors of Berlin from the West. Trains and road transports were stopped. Electric power was cut. West Berlin was isolated from the free world. The response was the Berlin Airlift. For the next 11 months, American, British, and French planes landed one after another, delivering supplies of food, coal, and petroleum into the besieged city. The Russian blockade of Berlin had brought Europe to the brink of war. <laughs> 